Massive biceps are one of the most sought after goal of any bodybuilder. Whether you're getting ready to win your next bodybuilding trophy or you just train to look good and build an impressive physique, there's nothing quite like full, massive, and peaked biceps to add to that development of your physique. And if you've watched my channel for some time, I'm sure you come across my content where I break down in detail how to fully develop the biceps with three specific training variables. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll link that for you at the end of this video so you can check it out. But regardless of how you train, Many will make the simple argument that genetics play a huge role in the development of a specific muscle. And while many will claim that no matter how hard you train or what methods you use, you either have the genetics for large biceps or you don't. Now, genetics aside, if you don't train a muscle correctly, consistently, and expose it to the proper stimulus for growth and recover and repeat for a long period of time, you will never reach your full genetic potential for that muscle, regardless of your genetics or not. So I always tell people you must train that muscle correctly, regardless if you think you have the genetics for it or you don't. But you also will never know your full genetic potential until you train hard and long enough to reach it. Many guys can start with small, skinny arms and look like they have poor genetics for muscle building and yet can later turn around to have arms that are by far their most developed body part. I'm the perfect example of this. When I first started training at 14, I was 130 pounds and my arms flexed were roughly 12 to 13 inches. By the time I got up to my head, heaviest weight of around 205 pounds with a slightly higher body fat percentage than I normally carry, my arms had reached their biggest ever at over 19 inches, completely pumped and flexed. We're talking about seven inches in circumference gained over the years. And while most of you might know, I generally sit a little bit leaner most of the year, around 190 to 195 pounds. And my arms at that body fat percentage are a bit closer to the 19 inch mark on the dot. So obviously, not only did I train hard to accomplish this, but of course, there's a case to be made that I clearly had a good genetic predisposition for larger arms, but I would have never known how much unless I attempted to fully maximize them. But the question is, is there any way to determine if you have good genetics for massive biceps? And the answer is, there's actually another way to get a rough idea if you do. And it's probably the only real way to know for sure. Take a look at your biceps in the flexed position. You have the belly of the muscle, in this case, the bicep, and then you have the tendon of the muscle. And in the case of the bicep, the tendon that we're looking at is where the belly of the muscle ends and inserts into the elbow. This can also be described as the gap between the bicep and the elbow. How long is that space in between? The exact space or the gap is the length of the tendon. The shorter the tendon, the longer the actual belly of the muscle is. And the smaller the gap, the more potential for muscle growth. I'm sure you've all seen a bodybuilder hit a front double bicep and you see that huge gap between the bicep muscle and the elbow. It almost resembles a tennis ball sitting on the arm. Now compare that to someone who hits a double bicep with massive arms and you'll always see a much different shape. This resembles much more of a football, but the clear difference is where the bicep inserts, it inserts almost directly into the elbow. And there's almost no gap and no sign of the actual tendon in the flex position. The average person has approximately one and a half inches between the bicep and the elbow, again, in this flex position. If you have two or more inches in the flex position, you have what's considered very short biceps. And ultimately, this can limit your growth potential. If you have a half an inch or less, you have what's considered very long muscle bellies, which is opposite optimal for bodybuilding. The same exact example can be used with the triceps, which arguably makes up two thirds of the entire upper arm. And if we're talking massive arms specifically here, the triceps are even more important for overall size. The tricep muscle has three heads, the lateral, the long head, and the medial. They are all attached to a long tendon that runs down to the elbow. Flex your triceps and you should notice a horseshoe shape. The lateral head forms the outside of this horseshoe, the long head forms the inside, and the medial head sits right under the long head near the elbow. Because the triceps have three heads, there can be a bit more variances here, and measuring is not always as cut and dry as measuring the biceps. But generally, you want to measure two things. The length of the tendon, in this case, where it attaches from the elbow to the lateral head, how long is the space between? But many people might have a long tendon and a short lateral head, which is not ideal for muscle growth, but they can make up for it with a longer, long head of the triceps. This is something that I personally have. Not the longest lateral head and a fairly long tendon, but I make up for it with the long head of the triceps, inserting very low on the arm with a short distance between the long head and the elbow. And naturally, as a result, the majority of my tricep mass and where they are most impressive, in my opinion, comes from the development of the long head. This is something that I've always found interesting when developing muscle groups with many heads. Most people are so worried about a specific exercise to hit a specific head of the muscle. But my approach has always been to look at the muscle as a whole. Understand that if I train it hard, maximize the exercises I use to train that muscle, focus on proper range of motion, heavy lifting, stretching the muscle, 
and peak contraction and focus on general mass gain, then the muscle will fully develop within your own genetic limits. If you happen to have these long insertions, that's great if your goal is more muscle. But if you don't have them, it doesn't mean the muscle won't grow, but it might not be your most genetically gifted body part. And there's an argument that some of the best bodybuilders in the world all have this genetic trait. Many of them, not just in one muscle group, but multiple, if not all of them. And unfortunately, or fortunately, this is in your DNA. It's something that cannot be changed from training. And regardless if you're gifted with this trait or not, this means absolutely nothing about how you respond to training. It also doesn't mean anything about how you should train for maximum muscle mass. All that it means is if you're looking to build more mass, do you have a genetic advantage or not? And regardless of the answer, you still need to train properly, train consistently, and give it years to fully develop your physique within your genetic potential. And if you're looking to build more mass, using the methods that I personally have to develop my physique and the ones that I recommend for anyone looking to gain muscle using proven old school bodybuilding training methods, I highly recommend you check out my old school mass gain training programs in the description below. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.